Hello, how are you? Ivan, Nelly, how are you? Fine, teacher. And you? Pretty good. It's our last day for this week. Almost we are finished. We have a little bit of activities to do. We have the, and then we also have the midterm. Do you guys have any plans for this weekend? Good evening. Good evening, Xiomara. Good evening. Go to church on Saturday. And, and on Sunday, we participate in a career with the brothers of the church. Maybe I can go. What is a career? Career is run, running. Okay, a race. A race, yes. A race, okay. Good. Remember, a career exists in English, but a career is medicine, education, economics. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And so it's okay. I But I thought maybe you are studying theology. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, good. Uh, Nelly, are you an Adventist? Yes, teacher. I imagine because you said Saturday. And all my friends that are Adventists go on Saturday. Really? That's mm -hmm. nice. Yes, yes, yes. I used to teach English classes to the Adventists uh, in San Salvador. I used to go to the headquarters and teach them English in there for the office, for the administration also. Mm -hmm. Wow. Have you ever gone to the church? Of course. Some Yes. What do you think about our church? I don't like it. But right. I'm happy. <laughs> but I'm happy that you enjoy it and it's good for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I and I respect the, the beliefs. You know, but for me it's not there are it's not it's nothing that I, I don't feel a connection when I go into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well but we have not... to visit my church I will visit. I will visit maybe <laughs> it's different I have visited many I have visited many places I have visited Jewish synagogues I have visited uh Muslim temples I have gone to Native American Indians powwow I have gone to Catholic uh churches I have gone to a uh, Buddhist temples, evangelic things. I have gone to many of them. So it's not it's not a, about the religion itself. It's just mm. it's me. I, I understand that yeah. it's just not for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I enjoy it. I enjoy reading about the many different religions and different parts. Mm -hmm. You have traveled a lot. Yes. Yes, I have. Um, I had um my family believed that uh, before you made a decision, you had to learn about the other religions and so you can make a correct decision for you. And it's not imposed because uh, I am Catholic, you have to be, or I am evangelic, you have to be. Is In fact, in our religion, was the idea was you have to, in my family, you have to experience mm -hmm. other religions to know what is the correct for you. Okay. That way is not I like some people that they go to church and they only go because the family, the father was or the mother was, and you have to follow the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my case, I study at Catholic school. And but I I decide to be an Adventist. Okay. Because I'm convinced. Convinced, convinced that it's a true, true church. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
that's great. It's wonderful. I, I always think that whatever makes people better is the correct path. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, hey, now, um, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, oh, I have, we have Rebecca. Yes, Rebecca. Hi, good, good night, everyone. And Dieter, I can enter the platform. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, I I really want to do the listening, but... Uh, Share your screen, Rebecca. Okay, okay. Let's okay. take a look. Okay, okay, now. This, this, this. You can see that. I can see that. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Click I in. tried. I tried. I I I tried to enter many times, but it's the same. I Click can... letter B. I think, uh, teacher, that the problem is that she is using Mozilla. I, think I don't know if you can try be... with other, for example, Explorer or Google Chrome. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. But let me see. Yeah. It usually has to do, when you get that type of message, it has to be with the one that you use. Sometimes it's better Safari, sometimes Mozilla, sometimes Google Chrome. But usually Google Chrome is the one that gives you less problems. Okay. It's not always perfect because nothing is perfect, but usually the one that is less problems is Google Chrome because they are faster to, uh, to fix the different issues that they have. So try with Google Chrome, but if not, today we help you because we're going to work in it in pairs and we're going to be able to help or share the audios with you in Teams. Uh, before we begin, uh, we have uh, Daniel who has a presentation. He said that he's going to do the best presentation. Uh, so, <laughs> Daniel, are you ready to give the best presentation? The best presentation of my life. Hey, All good right, evening, teacher. Go. Good evening, David and other colleagues. And uh, that day um, has. I have a problem with the connection, but uh, today early I got to down to the receptionist and said the uh, the problem, and maybe maybe the connection it's is it comes how do you say stable? Stable. What? Stable. Stable. Okay. Well. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I um, try to to make um, a little bit of I talk about uh, some experience in my in my life that is is I talk about uh, to my history. Okay, I will talk about some opportunities that I have to travel to other country for my work, practically in Central America including Republic, Dominican Republic in Italy. And now it's an example, like um, I spent in a few days, like a week in uh, Panama City, but uh, the best experience uh, I had was in Africa, uh, specifically specific in Egypt. I was there for three months, in a workshop called um, Analysis Agriculture Project. And in this country, I visit the pyramids and the Nile River, the Cairo Museum, and different mosques like uh, um, religion, uh, Arabic religion, I don't remember what is the specific name. 
but uh, with this part, I visit different cities like Giza. It's finished. It's finished. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Daniel, we have to work on helping you organize your ideas. You are talking a lot and you don't get to the information. So you lose a lot of time when you are trying to explain. So we have to focus on trying to get you to go directly to it. Maybe it's because of okay. your job. Um, normally, depend the positions in the jobs, usually it has to do with this. Mm -hmm. Because in many, it's, it's very different, the culture, right? Because American culture is very, hey, we come for this. And Latin American culture is, hey, how are you? How is the family? Are you okay? <laughs> how are you? And then you, it's like 10 minutes before the meeting. Okay. Okay. Right? Maybe the Latin American people don't focus on the idea, really. Yes. And, and the same for other, in other countries. You have gone to the Middle East and the Middle East is similar to Latin America. It's not business. You have to, right? Japanese culture is even more difficult but because Japanese, you cannot discuss a uh, business in the first meeting. You have to have the first meeting only social. And then the next meeting is business. It's very disrespectful in the first one. So it's only for culture. So it's only about getting your ideas organized for each one. Okay, thank you. I get a lot about that. No That's problem. All right. Ah, interesting. So guys, today we're going to go ahead. We have two main activities. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. The first main activity with your partner. Yesterday, we finished the reading. Um, so today is super easy because today is only to select each one. If you need to reread, it's okay. Read again and try to get just to remember, just to remind yourself a little bit about what we read and match where each of these sentences in which paragraph they would go. And then after that, we are going to do the midterm exam. With the midterm exam with your partner has five different sections. Part one, listen, and then select the correct answer for listening number one. There are four questions. Then you listen, and then we have four questions for listening number two. So two listenings, four questions for each one, okay? Then in letter B, we're going to put the sentence correctly, rewriting it. We're going to use the words, uh, for example, here, we're going to use the words in passive with by or others, right? We want to change from active sentence to passive sentences. In this one, we're going to have four. Then in the second one, it's like yesterday. We are going to use the words who, that, or which. And we're going to join the sentences. So what is the difference? Here, the same information, but change to passive. Here, put the two sentences in one sentence using connectors. Okay. Then in section C, is about selecting the correct grammar structure, which is the correct way to answer or to complete the sentence, numbers one through three. In part two, the same idea, which is the right, the simple past or the past continuous. There are no mistakes in spelling, only the mistakes in grammar. And then in part three, you use the word in parentheses and you have to put in the correct form. These are participles, the participles with ED, present participle, or participle with ING, right? Present or past participles. That is for section C. Section D, simply read and choose which is the best word. What are they describing? So you read each one and select the best word to complete the sentence. And the last part, like the yesterday, you read and then you choose which one is the part where they're talking about. You can see here in the box, they say part three, number two, number one, and so on. Oops, my apologies. 
there we can see number two, number three, or number one, different forms. So you read and then you select with your partner which one. This is going to be a little long, whoops, a little long because we have many different activities. So we're going to begin right now so you have enough time to complete. And with your partners, we're going to have 30 minutes. Before we begin, do you have any questions? That's all clear. It's clear? Only one thing, teacher. Yes. Uh, in, the, uh, in the part of the story of Harry Potter, the questions is not uh, logic with the reading. It is a little bit difficult about it because, for example, the first, the first one is she hate going to school but always loved to read. And in the story, doesn't say anything about it. Yes, the don't match, don't match the the photograph with the with the answer, with the number. Exactly. No, no, it's not. It's like uh, the lo opuesto. The opposite of the story. So that's the why is a little bit difficult. Okay. So here, let's take a look. Let's match. She hated going to school, but always loved to read. So in this case, where in the story are we talking about her attending school? In which paragraph do we talk about her and her attending school? The second one. That is where it goes. That is correct. You see, it is where you would put where this information is appropriate. In which paragraph would the information be appropriate? That is what you're going to put. Daniel? Okay. Yeah, I, and this part is, is, is difficult, but uh, it's a question, teacher. In yes. this part, we, we must to do an, some anal analysis about the the paragraph. But um, I think that is, is uh, use the logic, and but David, it has the reason because it's no logic with the, the, the answer with the paragraph. Oh, because you are not looking for the information in the paragraph. The instructions are not look for the information in the paragraph. The instructions are this information, which paragraph is the most appropriate to place the information. So remember in the exercise of the reading is not, ah, where do I find this information? No, I have this information. I have the story. Where can I put this information according to the other? That is the difference. And there is a trap. <laughs> exactly. And that's where, as Daniel mentioned, that is the difference to prepare you for exams. Because in the exams, is not identify information. It's also place and locate. Like if you are going to do the TOEFL exam or other exams, you have to not only extract information, you have to analyze and place the correct information. We want to use the logic. Yes, you have to find where would be the best one. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to make our groups and I'm going to give you time. That way you have enough time to complete. We're going to have groups of three. Um, you can also share the screen or work, uh, ask each other questions. We have, let me see. Uh, thank you so much. We have Ada and Carla as oyentes. Thank you, Ada, and thank you, Carla, for putting oyente. It makes it a lot easier for all of us to know, and that way we don't bother you um, when you are trying to work and when they are trying to work. And I will put you in groups so that way you can listen and participate. Well, at least listen. Okay, so let's start with our partners. Go. OK, 
Gabriel, can you join or do you have difficulty? Good. In this case, while the students are working, also for those that are a little bit late or watching the video, we're going to go back and watch all of the videos from section one, two, and three to help you understand the class. Hi, welcome to another module. This time we'll study passive with by. But before we go deep into the topic, let me tell you what passive voice does to a sentence. Passive voice changes the emphasis on a sentence. In other words, we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action, number two, there's no doer of an action, and number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use, as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, Use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrabble sentence for you. My sister, this book in 2010, wrote. Can you try to unscramble the sentence and make sense of it? I will give you 15 seconds. Great. So we came up with, my sister wrote this book in 2010. Now in English, we can say the same things in another way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time I will give you 20 seconds. My sister, this book, by in 2010, written was. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. This book was written by my sister this book is the object, was, was or were, written is the past participle of the verb, by, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember? We don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. Who broke into our house? We don't know. Number two, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. There is no doer of this action. The last use, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. My dog was run over by a car. What happened to my dog is more important than the doer. 
Finally, let's go over the structure of the passive and simple past. Because we're using passive in simple past, this is what we'll use. Was, were, plus past participle. Before we go, we want you to work on the following sentences so you're able to practice. Our sentences are in active voice. Your work is to switch them to passive voice. Please write them on our discussion box. Number one, mom prepared the food. Number two, all the employees read the memo. Number three, the boy ate the cake. Did you get it? Work with me. Lock, hot. Oh. Hi, let's work on your pronunciation now. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Pronunciation. The letter O. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the letter O is pronounced in the following words. Not. Top. No. Don't. Do. Food. One. Love. Remember to play the audio program as many times as you need to. It is important for you to notice the difference on pronunciation. We want you to practice a little bit more, so pronounce the following words. Did you get it? Work with me. Lock, hot. Own, wrote. Soon, who. Come, done. Good job. Hi, are you ready to listen to the conversation? This time we will listen to two people asking and giving information. They do so by using passive voice, but this time in simple present. Try to identify the sentences. I will underline them for you as soon as the conversation is over. Conversation. I need some information. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union? I think the euro is used in most of the EU. Oh, right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh? Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Were you able to do it before I did? Nice. Now I want you to answer the following question. What three things does the man ask about the European Union? Write your answers on our discussion box. Hi, we're back again. Now we'll study passive voice in simple present without by. Please pay attention to the explanation, examples, and exercises. Passive without by, simple present. For the simple present, use the present of be plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of the European Union. Passive. The euro is used in most of the EU. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. As we saw with the simple past passive, we change the emphasis when we use the simple present passive. Instead of saying, they use the euro in most of the European Union, we can say, the euro is used in most of the European Union. The focus changes from they, 
to the euro, which is what we're interested in. Follow me here. I have these passive sentences to demonstrate how the by phrase is omitted here. The euro is used in most of the European Union by the people. Cars are manufactured in Europe by manufacturers. What I want you to notice is that the doer of the action in each of these sentences is obvious or not important, so the by phrase can be easily omitted. So this takes us to our structure, and because we're using simple present passive, this is what we have to work with. Is R present of B plus past participle. Can you now take a look at the following images and come up with one sentence using passive in simple present? Please write your sentence on our discussion box and ask your teacher to check it out for you. Hi everyone, are you ready? Let's go on now talking about past continuous versus simple past. I want you to listen and take a look at this. This is a timeline. Notice both actions happened at the same time, but one action began earlier and was in progress when the other action happened. So we may say, I was reading a book when you came. What you just listened to and saw was the intro to this new topic. Now we'll play the audio program so you can follow and understand it better. Remember to stay there in the explanation and take notes. Past continuous versus simple past. Use the past continuous for an action in progress in the past. Use the simple past for a completed action. I was watching a good movie, but I fell asleep before the end. I was working at a boring job when someone offered me a much better one. While I was shopping one day, a celebrity walked into the store. I will begin talking about simple past because we have studied this before. So let's review. Simple past. When do we use it? We use simple past to express that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. Read the following examples. They went to the movies. He came home. She drove my car. I will leave you with the structure of affirmative, negative, and questions just for you to have it in mind and practice it. Now let's talk about past continuous. This tense has more than one use, but this time we will use it to describe an unfinished action that was interrupted by another event or action. Take a look at the following examples. I was sleeping when the dog barked. She was working when he had an accident. You were painting the house when you ran out of paint. Take notes on the following. We have these two words, while and when. While it is usually used with past continuous and when it is usually used with simple past. In other words, we use while plus long actions, past continuous, and when plus short actions, simple past. Finally, before we go on using both tenses in one sentence, I will show you the structure for past continuous. Listen and follow it. For affirmative, subject plus was, were, plus verb, ing. Negative, subject plus was, were, plus not, plus verb, and ing. Questions, was, were, plus subject, plus verb, ing, plus question mark. Past continuous versus simple past. We often use the past continuous and the past simple tense together. The past continuous is often used with the simple past to show that one action was in progress when the other action occurred. I want you to take a look at this diagram and try to make sense of it. Now work on the following statements. You may do it with your own information. For example, you may say, last week I was driving when I got a flat tire. 
Remember to use both tenses just like I did. Okay. So as we can see, we have quite a bit of information in unit one and part of unit two. The important is to be clear what is the difference in the grammar structures. The grammar structures, those videos are to help you. Feel free to watch them many times. That is the function that you can watch and understand between the past, the simple past, past progressive, so that we understand simple past completed actions, past progressive actions that were not completed. That's the important part. Okay. Okay, let me upload this video and then we'll continue with a few more. Okay. Surprisingly. Hi, this time we'll talk about some adverbs which are often used in storytelling to emphasize that something interesting is about to happen. Which of these adverbs are positive, which are negative, and which ones are neutral? Coincidentally, fortunately, luckily, miraculously, sadly, strangely, suddenly, surprisingly, unexpectedly, unfortunately. Now that you have listened and decided which ones were positive, negative, and neutral, we want you to complete the following statements with those adverbs so you can come up with creative sentences. Hello, this time we want you to listen to the following conversation. The idea is for you to understand what's going on and also to practice it with a friend or a relative. Once you do that, we want you to play the second part of the conversation and get ready to answer the question I have for you. What have you been doing? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? Please write your answer on our discussion box. Part B. Listen to two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Hey, Bob. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. She, it, plus has been, plus verb. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of statements with have and haven't been? 
Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for. A continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of these tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? With me. Nice to have you back with us. So, can you tell me which movies are playing in theaters right now? Can you tell me which movies have you seen? The next conversation is about two people trying to decide which movie to see tonight. Try to listen carefully for details. What's playing? Part A. Listen and practice. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Now that you have listened to the conversation, tell me what happens next. What do they decide to do? Write it on our discussion box. Yeah, her last movie was especially good. It's probably one of my favorites of all time. Actually, I didn't see that, but I heard it was just okay. Well, I'll call the theater and find out what time the movie starts. Hello? Could you tell me what time the new Halle Berry movie is playing tonight? I'm sorry. The Halle Berry movie closed last night. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks. You won't believe this. It's not showing anymore. It just finished playing last night. Oh, no. I guess we're back where we started. Why don't we just see what's on TV tonight? That's fine with me. <laughs> Welcome. This time you will learn about participles used as adjectives in present and in past. Please take notes and feel free to play the audio program as well as the explanation as many times as you need to. Page 87. Exercise 3. Grammar Focus. Participles as Adjectives. Present participles. 
Stephen King's books are fascinating. The last James Bond film was boring. The new Halle Berry movie sounds interesting. Past participles. I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books. I was bored by the last James Bond film. I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. Before we begin, I want to go over to what exactly is the past participle. The past participle is the form of a verb typically ending in ed in English that is used in forming perfect and passive tenses and sometimes as an adjective. In this section, we'll study participles as adjectives. Pay attention. I want to go over two important points. Number one, do you remember what an adjective is? Very good. An adjective describes a noun. For example, the white cat ran away from John. Adjective, white, noun, cat. In other words, because participles can be used as adjectives, it means that the participle as adjective also describes a noun. For example, the white cat was exciting to watch. Noun, cat, participle as adjective, exciting. Number two, I imagine you noticed we use present and past participles during the audio program. Let's work around that. When we use present participle, we add ing. And when we use past participle, we add ed. Notice what happens here. We took the verb excite and we turn it into present participle, becoming exciting. The same verb, but this time into past participle and it became excited. I know you're wondering when to use participles in present or past. Here you go. Present participles describe a noun and past participles describe feeling of a noun. I'll try to simplify it. ing equals outside factor that causes a feeling. ed equals expresses the feeling or reaction. With examples, I am sure you will understand it better. Here, I am just showing you the present and past participle. Interesting, interested. Tiring, tired. Exciting, excited. Now we'll use them in sentences. The museum is interesting. I'm interested. Work is tiring. I am tired. The movie is exciting. I'm excited. Please complete the description below with the correct form of these words. As always, write your answers in our discussion box. Fantastic. Horrible. Marvelous. Hi, ready to work? Go over the list of synonyms and place them under the correct category. Please listen to the following list. For you to work it out, you must make a chart on your notebook like this. So go ahead, listen and place the synonyms properly. Make sure you ask your teacher to double check on your answers. Absurd, bizarre, disgusting, dreadful, dumb, fabulous, fantastic, horrible, marvelous, odd, outstanding, ridiculous, silly, terrible, unusual, weird. We want you to write four sentences using the words learned about movies, actors, and novels. Make sure to write them on our discussion box.
Hi, we have previously studied relative clauses of time. Today we'll study relative clauses using relative pronouns, who, which, that. As you realize, these sentences contain two clauses, a main one and a relative one. For example, he is the actor who won two Academy Awards. Page 89. Exercise 9. Grammar Focus. Relative clauses. Use who or that for people. He's an actor. He won two Oscars. He's an actor who won two Oscars. He's an actor that won two Oscars. Use which or that for things. It's a movie. It stars Kate Winslet. It's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. It's a movie that stars Kate Winslet. We want you to know what relative clauses do. They join two sentences together and give information about something in the main clause. Relative clauses are joined by relative pronouns, who, which, that. Who is used to join clauses about people. Which is used to join clauses about things. That is used to join classes about people and things. Hope this topic wasn't so complicated. Try with these following sentences. I will give you the first part of the sentence and you finish it using a relative pronoun. Ready? Brad Pitt is an actor. Gladiator is a movie. And here's the first listening of the exam. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. How was your trip to Egypt? Oh, it was incredible. I finally got to visit the pyramids. And what did you think? I learned so much. Like, did you know that they were uncovered by Napoleon? Before he visited the country, they were buried in sand. Really? Do they know who built them? Yes, of course. They were built by the Egyptians. And did you go inside a pyramid? No. Most of the pyramids are closed to tourists. You can't go in. But I took a lot of photos from the outside. Do you want to see? Two. Weren't you just on vacation in Africa? Well, actually, I was there for work. But I was able to take a couple of great trips that I'll never forget. Where did you go? I went to Victoria Falls on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. The falls are amazing. I really enjoyed the trip. I'd love to go there. What about your other trip? I visited a huge stone wall called Great Zimbabwe. The area inside the wall is supposed to be big enough to hold a city with 20,000 people. It's the largest monument in Southern Africa. So what happened to the city? No one really knows. I guess it's still a mystery. Three. Welcome back. So how was Easter Island? I've never been anywhere like it. It's unique. What's so special about it? Well, first of all, it's very remote. Chile and Tahiti are over 3,000 kilometers away, but it's known mainly for the giant statues. Oh, yeah. I've seen photos of them. They were built by Polynesians who arrived there nearly 2,500 years ago. It sounds like you really enjoyed it. I did. It was like an open-air museum with the statues along the coast, archaeological sites, volcanic craters, and some fantastic beaches. 4. What have you been doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been living abroad. I was working in Laos for a while. Laos? I just read an article about Laos. I've always wanted to go there. It's a beautiful country, especially the city where I lived. It was built at the point where the Mekong River meets the Khan River. Yeah, I think I read about it. Isn't that the place with lots of temples? Yeah, and fortunately, I had time to visit many of them. My favorite temple is called Golden City Monastery. It was built on the riverbank nearly 500 years ago.
Now, let's take a look at the other groups. Okay. All right. Hi, Daniel. You... How are you? Mm -hmm. So, how did you feel? Were you able to finish, complete it? Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, wonderful. <laughs> so, now we are ready to continue the new unit on Monday. Let's take. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Let's make sure that everything is clear then. Any questions before we start checking? The first thing we're going to check is the Harry Potter. Okay, let's take a look. So we said that she hated going to school, but always loved to read was paragraph two, right? What about this section where she says, I really wrote it for myself? Go ahead, take a look at your answers. Tell me, where where do you think would be the most appropriate? The second. Okay, also in the second, okay. No, 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 I think it's number. Let me see my answers. Paragraph one. Paragraph one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the second sentence. Okay. What about there were times where she couldn't even afford to eat? Paragraph five. Paragraph five. Okay. Despite her fame and fortune, she's been able to keep her private life. Paragraph six. To six, six, please. Paragraph six. <laughs> Okay, good. She didn't have a pen or paper with her, so she had to memorize it. Number three. Number three. And it was filled with 10 versions of the first chapter of the book. Number four. Number four. Okay. So I think we have just a little bit here. We have all of the numbers. Let's double check, make sure everything is correct. Hey, there we go. All of those are the correct orders. In case you made a mistake, please correct it. And it should be the order of two, one, five, six, three, and four. Okay. Now let's go on to the next part of checking the listenings. Here we had many different sections, but super easy. Only we, they were all multiple choice. When did they when did they talk about the Egyptians' pyramids? What do they say? Are not open to tourists. Ah, are not open to tourists. Okay. What about Great Zimbabwe is? The largest monument in South Africa. So there. Mm -hmm. Good. Easter Island has okay. come large status. Has some large statues, okay. The city where the woman lived? It's located where two rivers meet. Okay, great. And in the second part, both Joel and Marion? Are interested in movies because of what I used to read. Good. And what about Barbara? What does Barbara say? So Ben Affleck was the actor who starred in Cold Mountain. Okay, good. And what does mandatory class attendance mean? It means you must attend every class during the semester. Okay. And the last one, what is true about the performance?
You're not allowed to receive phone calls. Okay. Great job. As you can see, you should have 100 because all of our answers were correct. Okay. Section 2, all of them are correct. Section 1, as you can see, as well, all of the options that we chose. In this moment, we're going to pause. We're going to go ahead and relax this weekend. On Monday, we begin Unit 3, and we also finish checking this one. Okay? Okay, teacher. Have yes, a good night. Okay. You Thank you so much. Thank you for connecting. Happy weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye. <laughs>